Our distinguished speaker tonight is Dr. Carol L. Riley. Uh, Dr. Riley is Distinguished Professor Emeritus of Anthropology at Southern Illinois University, and he's the author of over 20 books on archaeology and ethnohistory, with special emphasis on the American Southwest. And Dr. Riley and his wife live in uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico, uh, and he's going to discuss tonight his book, Becoming Atzalan. Uh, when we were trying to come up with a speaker for this year, as you recall, and some of you may recall, we had Dr. Brian Fagan from uh, University of Southern California, Santa Barbara last year. Uh, we went to our advisors, Dr. Wilcox and Peter Pillis, and we asked for some suggestions. And the, li all the list came back with, uh, and we gave them a couple suggestions as well. And the list came back that Dr. Riley was on those lists. And, um, and so we went through the, the list, and I realized, well, I've got Dr. Riley's book, and I really like his book. So I'm going to make the decision as to who's going to come here. <laughs> and so it, it, I have to pass this little story on. Uh, when I contacted Dr. Riley, and how did I find him? I went through Google and the white pages and found this guy, Riley, in Las Vegas, New Mexico. And I crossed my fingers and said, gee, I hope that's him. Um, and so I wrote, and sure enough, it was him. And he wrote back, and he said, uh, well, I, I am honored, and I will accept with one condition that you understand that I'm not a young spring chicken, and I may not be around then. Uh, <laughs> now, okay, so I took that with a grain of salt because my mother's going to be 94 in a couple of months, and I hear that from her about every three months. You know, this, this is my last Christmas. This is my last birthday. This is my last Mother's Day. Uh, anyhow, and she's still around. And thankfully, so is Dr. Riley still around. So would you help me welcome Dr. Carol Riley? Okay. Does that seem to work all right? Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, well, I, I am no spring chicken, but as you see, I did make it for good or bad. <laughs> whether, whether it's good or bad, you can decide at the end of the lecture. Well, let's start with definitions. This lecture is about how I view the greater Southwest as the northern frontier to Mesoamerican civilization. There are four terms here. Greater Southwest, frontier, Mesoamerica, civilization. What's the Greater Southwest? Well, we all, uh, I think you all know what the Greater Southwest is, but just for, just to bring it home, I'll say it's archeologically, that is prehistorically, the, roughly the states of Arizona and New Mexico, uh, parts of uh, other states, especially Utah and Colorado, and uh, large parts of the Mexican states of Chihuahua and Sonora. Okay, what's the frontier? What I mean by frontier is an area next to a civilized society that does not partake of that civilization, but is greatly influenced by it, one way or the other. It is a barbarized um, adjunct and uh, usually close to a civilized society. It's a frontier to a civilized society. Mesoamerica, central, western, central, eastern and southern Mexico, and uh, parts of Central America in pre-Columbian times. Civilization there goes back 3,000 years. And while we're at it, what is civilization? Okay, it comes about when societies are advanced enough, have sufficient agricultural and usual animal husbandry surplus so that uh, you can get large settlements of people forming uh, towns or cities gathered into, quite often, into states or statelets, governed by elite classes, specialization of very, various kinds, including metallurgy. There are public structures, very sophisticated architecture. 
In Mesoamerica, these include pyramids, column halls, ritual ball courts, palaces, and so forth. There's a sophisticated religion with an elite priesthood running the religion and uh, uh, lots of trade external and internal. There are also systems of writing. Not all civilizations have all of these things. The Maya, who certainly formed a civilization, incredible, a brilliant writing system, for example, uh, hardly had metallurgy in the latter, latter part uh, the, of the uh, pre-Spanish period. They did have some gold. That's about, about it. And it was used mainly for jewelry. Uh, the Inca of uh, Peru and then the other Peruvian civilizations before them had uh, incredible political organization, uh, great states, an empire that stretched for almost 3,000 miles, and yet they had no system of writing. Okay, go on with the lecture. This is going to be, but to some degree, a record of a personal journey. That's to say the development of my ideas about and my changing perceptions about Southwestern archaeology over the 65 or so years that I've been a professional anthropologist. Uh, when I was a kid in the 1920s growing up in the Missouri Ozarks, I was taught that one never talks about oneself. It's considered terribly bad manners. So I'm violating my own code of ethics tonight by talking about myself. I'm sorry. Now what I'm interested in is the concept of how the Southwest changed and took on various shades of meaning from the 1870s and 1880s when uh, scholars, archaeologists, historians, ethnologists, and then the uh, scholars tended to be all three at once in those days. And um, uh, their work on down to the present day. The earlier anthropologists and historians, people like Adolf Bandelier, the Mendeleev brothers, um, James and Matilda Cox, especially Matilda Cox Stevenson, uh, Walter Fuchs, Frank Cushing, and many others, concerned themselves almost entirely, there was a couple of exceptions to this, but almost entirely with the American Southwest. This was essentially the Southwest to Americaners, to, to Americanists. The one exception was the large site of Casas Grandes, not Casa Grande on the Gila, but Casas Grandes in Chihuahua, northwest Chihuahua. And that was visited by a number of people, including Adolf Bandelier. Um, but uh, in spite of the fact that they were mainly concerned with the American Southwest, because they didn't really know much about anything else, know much about the Mexican portion of the Southwest, or as the Mexicans say, the Noroeste uh, of Mexico, de Mexico, uh, they, um, even though they were limited kind of to the American Southwest, they tended to see the Southwest as an appendage of Mesoamerica, as a frontier of Mesoamerica. But a Southwestern archeology span came of age between the two world wars. There tended to be a somewhat narrow viewpoint, uh, but a rather different one. Let's, can I have slide two now? Uh, 